So if you've ever paid any attention to me, you know that I pretty much uh, am a fan of stocks and to the extent you need to limit risk against stocks, a fixed income alternative. And people routinely ask me, why is it that I like those things instead of other stuff like illiquid assets or commodities like gold or copper or Bitcoin or other stuff like real estate. So l let me address that without belaboring any of the points too completely, which might take too long. Stocks are adaptive over time because businesses change with time to adapt to technology and circumstance. They grow. Businesses actually do something. I'm not too big a fan, actually, of fixed income. In the long term, stocks have a high return. They are liquid. And if you build a portfolio of them right, they're not too darn volatile. Gold, for example, is more volatile than stocks are. But gold doesn't do anything. It's just a commodity. Same with copper. Same with Bitcoin. Some people want to argue about Bitcoin. I don't want to argue. I'm going to go back to my point of what does it do? If it does something the way a business does, that adapts, grows, and changes with the circumstances. I mean, I've known in my lifetime, and my father's lifetime before me, and my grandfather's lifetime, the world has changed hugely. Businesses adapt with those changes. Businesses innovate. Businesses create over time never yet done things, or they get eaten alive by the competition who does those never yet done things. I like that. Stocks are liquid. Businesses that are not publicly traded companies, once you get into them, hard to get out of them. You pay a price to get out of them, just like you pay a price to get into any other form of illiquid asset when you want to go pitch it. Kind of a wholesale retail spread. The wholesale retail spread in stocks is tiny. So in that, then the other question becomes real estate. Now, there's nothing wrong with real estate. A lot of people made a lot of money in real estate. Uh, and I own some real estate. Uh, I own the real estate that, uh, that the firm operates in. My firm operates. Or at least most of it. But the fact of the matter is, with real estate, you have to manage it. You have to take care of it. There's a cost to it. A lot of people don't think about those costs, whether it's the property tax or, or, or. And then there's the deferred maintenance. And then there's what happens when storms hit. Uh, and when other natural problems occur, real estate has to be taken care of. There's nothing wrong with that. That's all fine. It's just it requires a level of management and activity that is a little bit akin, if you'll accept this, to what happens if you want to invest in cattle. You've got to take care of them. Uh, th there's nothing wrong with that either, but it's a lot uh, more effort relative to what happens with stocks where you just buy them and focus on that and not having to actually take care of them, take care of them the way you have to take care of the cattle or the real estate. So the answer is I like the stock and bond world, fixed income to offset volatility if required for someone's need. Why? Because the returns are good. Stocks have higher returns in the long term than non-levered real estate, than gold, than any other form of commodity. And yet they're more, they're liquid. The others aren't. They don't require management in any regard to the extent that the uh, things do anything, the others do require management. And so with that, I'm, those are my preferences. You may disagree, and that's fine by me. The reality is a lot of people like to own real estate because they can see it and feel it, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, other people just fundamentally are, and always have been, you know, the phrase often used is gold bugs. They just believe in gold. I've got no problem with that if that's what they believe in. Of course, we have a long history of gold prices, stock prices, and stocks have higher returns, and 
lower volatility and there's less risk there. But you know, a lot of people don't want to accept those facts. So with that, those are the reasons for my preferences, and I'm perfectly content to have you disagree with me. And that's just the reality because there's something for everybody, and not everybody has to agree on all forms of investments because that's what makes a market. Thank you for listening to me. Hi, this is Ken Fisher. Subscribe to the Fisher Investment YouTube channel if you like what you've seen. Click the bell to be notified as soon as we publish new videos.